loved ones that had to leave their home because they're getting threats thrown through their mailbox. Children that didn't feel safe going to school because they were getting bullied behind what was being said. And that's not to sweep anything under the rug whatsoever. To constantly say and report this incident as attack, attack, uh, attack, attack, terrorism, terrorism. It's unfair and it's insensitive. It's a definite, definite tragedy, definite. And that will never be swept under the rug. There's always going to be healing that, that has to take place. It's going to be difficult. And that, that should not be swept under the rug. Whatsoever. But it's very insensitive and unfair to not recognize that there, there's many 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 other victims that never is talked about and for people to paint a certain picture mostly from this county to put this picture out there it's not only hurtful but it's insensitive and it's not true I'm sure the court read through the motion for a change of venue. I'm assuming, though it was it was a lot, a lot of paperwork in those motions. I think it was obvious, obvious that the venue should have been changed. Obvious. It's too many connections and it's too close it's too close if there was any chance for a fair trial in an impartial jury it should not have been in this county but yet it was denied without any validity. Zero. There's so much bias is going on that Even with all this for the record, we still have no proof of jurisdiction. We still have no bond on file in the docket sheet. Well met. We still have no plaintiff. We still have no claim. Travels. What can I do for you? Can I help you? We're not sure of the relationship between you, Your Honor, and a father of See around. people that was injured. We're not clear on that relationship. No matter how well prepared the speech was, if it was a prepared speech, that was obvious. Where's the proof? I just asked the, that, that same question. 
can an affidavit be given that there is no bias, no conflict of interest, and no interest in the outcome of this case? There's, there's no proof if you hold the full judicial power of the state or is it the military power? Arguments. You've now repeated yourself a number of times, so I'm going to turn to the state to see if they have any response. Go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Judge, I'm going to summarize what I just heard by quoting from a case from the Eastern District of Wisconsin, a federal case found at 2022 Westlaw 3045190. Can you repeat that last I'm so sorry. 3045190 Retzloff versus Moran. The this case is talking about many of the topics that Mr. Brooks has now recited to the court and simply states the majority of Retzloff's filing is incomprehensible jargon and cut and paste legal mumble jumble. Sovereign citizen theories are frivolous and wholly without merit. The court goes on to cite to Bay B E Y versus the state of Indiana at 847 Fed 3rd 559 on pages 559 through 560 a Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals decision from 2017. Mr. Brooks knowingly. Call that name, nor do I know any individual by that name. Please do the courtesy of not interrupting the state, as they did not interrupt you for over the almost 50 minutes that you spoke. Thank you. Please continue. Your Honor, the record is very clear that Mr. Brooks knowingly, willingly, voluntarily, and intelligently insisted on representing himself in this trial. He has no constitutional right to stand by counsel, none whatsoever. The court patiently went through the form and advised him of many of the things he's complaining about here today. The resources of the state, the knowledge of the law, his ignorance of the law, and his words to this court, and I quote to the best of my ability, it don't make me flinch one bit. That's what he told this court, whatever it was, two weeks ago. Now he's here complaining over and over and over again how unfair this is to him. It's highly offensive. I don't know because unfortunately I was talking to my investigator if he ac accused this court of treason, but I certainly heard that word come out of his mouth and it is absolutely shocking that he would throw such a word around so loosely in this courtroom. This court has been exceedingly patient, exceedingly respectful, of his rights at every turn, at every turn. I want to address this claim that he only had three days to prepare for trial. It's absolutely a false statement. The record should reflect that he does have three banker's boxes on his table. The record should reflect that every time the state calls a witness to the stand, he swiftly and easily turns to those boxes, which appear to be alphabetized or organized in some fashion by the public defenders who turned it over to him and quickly removes the folder of the witness who's testifying and effectively cross-examines that witness using notes from the public defender. We know that because he's tried to confront witnesses with the notes from the public defender. He is not going into this blind or with one arm tied behind his back. They did all the homework and he's 
simply sitting here reading their notes, reading their cross-examination questions and asking the questions and then going on to his ridiculous questions having to do with his belief in the sovereign citizen movement. There's no way this record would reflect that this defendant is not adequately prepared for trial. He's never asked for a speedy trial. He makes conflicting statements. On one hand, you violated his rights because it's taken us so long to get to the trial. And on the other hand, we're rushing him to this case and he hasn't had adequate time to prepare. He is not, not, not denied access to legal materials in the jail. The record is very clear from the jail administrator. It should not be confused. He misleads this court intentionally to say, I only get out of my cell two hours a day. That is a fact. That is for his own safety so that other inmates do not inflict physical harm upon him. He has access to a tablet. He has access to a computer. Whether he chooses to ask for those resources is up to him. I would also cite the court to U.S. XREL George versus Lane, L-A-N-E, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals at 718 Fed 2nd 226, where a pro se defendant attempted to complain on appeal about his lack of access to a computerized legal research system paralegal training or law school education. The court rejected that contention and said, once a defendant has asserted his right to refuse counsel and conduct his own defense, he has no constitutional right to access those resources. And again, you warned him, Judge. You fairly warned him. And he basically acted as if you were insulting him and said, it didn't make him flinch one bit. Much of the last 50 minutes, which this court has graciously extended him the opportunity to go on and on and on, is nothing more than legal mumble jumble. He's reading from some typewritten transcript. I can see that from where I'm sitting. I don't know who's giving him these materials. But he has an agenda here. It's to stall, delay, disrupt, intimidate, and it's not going to work. Thank you. Your Honor, that's, that's, a, that's a load of crap. I gave you about 50 minutes. I just want to object to it. To it. The, the disrespectful comments that, that was just made. I, I'm not trying to hold you up from what you're going to say, but that's a load of crap. For, for her to sit there, Mr. Brooks, for her to your sit there, objection is noted. For her to sit it's, there, no, right. it's my turn. Let me, let me go through this. I graciously gave you 50 minutes to raise all these various points that you want to bring up. I then gave the state an opportunity to respond. That is the proper procedure. I followed decorum. I followed civility. I did not interrupt you. The state did not interrupt you. Your objection to their characterization, it's noted for the record. I am going to render a decision at this point. Please listen. And please do not interrupt. As I indicated, the defendant spoke for about 50 minutes, raising a litany of complaints and issues and theories regarding his view of how this case has proceeded. Many of these issues, if not the vast majority or even all of them, have already been addressed by this court in one way or the other. Looking at, for example, his complaints about change of venue, it is true this court denied the change of venue motion. 
The court made a record at that hearing. I stand behind that record and that decision. The arguments made regarding that decision, which I would note he has yet to file an interlocutory appeal ch challenging that, uh, are nothing more than speculative without a basis in law or fact. To say that this jury is biased would be a complete miscarriage of justice and a mischaracterization of the process this court painstakingly took in order to obtain a fair and impartial jury. There is absolutely nothing on this record before the court throughout these proceedings to suggest that this is a biased jury. I stand behind my previous determination and the process that this court went through, including initially calling an unusually large panel for which the clerk of court's office sent the initial qualification questionnaire and then ultimately a case specific questionnaire was sent to approximately 1400 jurors or potential jurors. There was ample opportunity for the parties throughout the proceedings leading up to the end of August to review those materials. There were numerous strikes for cause that this court entertained. Even prior to that specific hearing, the parties met, they conferred, uh, the state agreed not to challenge the vast majority of the challenges to jurors brought by uh, the defense. Then there was the hearing. Then this court uh, at jury selection uh, allowed for an indefinite number of strikes for cause. Many were granted, if not all. And then even on the day that the jurors were brought in, the court provided the jurors with a supplemental questionnaire dealing specifically with the issue of exposure to uh, the political advertisements. And then each, each sorry, party had the opportunity to exercise 10 preemptory strikes, which is well above the number of strikes allowed for by statute, which would be six based upon the homicide charges, one extra for the alternates, which would be seven, but out of an abundance of caution and in the interest of justice, the court gave each side 10, for which many of those Mr. Brooks chose not to exercise and then pursuant to state law, uh, the clerk of court chose names to strike by lot. Again, there's nothing on this record before the court to suggest that this jury that we have is anything but fair and impartial. And I take issue with the characterization that they are anything but. They've been diligent, they take notes, they are attentive, they come to this court as the case law says, there's a presumption that they come to the court without bias and it's through the jury selection process that the parties and the court ferret out that bias. Many of the jurors who were brought in were struck for cause. Many others were not. Um, but ultimately, we have a fair and impartial jury. As I listen to the litany of issues and arguments and complaints raised by Mr. Brooks, I would note that they are all unsubstantiated conclusory allegations and assertions without an adequate basis raised in law and fact. There's been several misstatements by Mr. Brooks uh, regarding either the record that's been made, items that's been provided to him, or the basis for the court either sustaining or um, sustaining, I should say, or overruling objections, for an example. Um, there's been a mischaracterization of his rights that he claims to have. As I have stated repeatedly, your constitutional rights 
are not absolute when you're in a criminal trial, meaning your First Amendment right is not unfettered. It is frankly no different why the case law is very clear. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. No one has a First Amendment right to do that. In a criminal case, the parties have an obligation to follow not only the Constitution and the statutes that are applicable, but to follow criminal procedure, the rules of evidence. That is what circumscri circumscribes the rights that a defendant or the state has in a criminal trial. The issues you raise, for example, regarding subject matter jurisdiction are baseless, they're frivolous, and they're not anything this court needs to address further. The fact that you now are asking questions about whether this is admiralty court or a military court or a court of competent jurisdiction is frivolous. This court has jurisdiction over the criminal cases brought before it by the state of Wisconsin. In this particular case, these are allegations that criminal conduct occurred in the city of Waukesha. The city of Waukesha is within the county of Waukesha. This court sits as an elected official in the county of Waukesha to hear these types of cases. That is clear. The only argument or relief that I could discern through the course of those 50 minutes was Mr. Brooks's request that this case be dismissed for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. And as I have just indicated, this court has jurisdiction. It's not been right. Let me rephrase it. The issue has not even been raised properly. There's never been a written motion. There's never been even an oral motion that would comport with 80201, which requires that the basis for the relief being requested be stated with specificity and be based in law and fact. The vast majority of the points that you raise, sir, are issues that you can raise on appeal. It is true. You have a right to an interlocutory appeal. I would not be the judge to decide any of those issues. So the fact that you complain about what I do, it's noted the record is going to be very clear. All right, I have a court reporter who's taking down the record of everything that is said and done in this courtroom when we are on the record. And so I don't have to all the time say it's noted for the record because we're on the record. I sometimes do that to hopefully make it clear to you or to note it. I don't always do that, but I'm not required to do that. You raise issues concerning, I guess, plea bargaining. I have never been made aware that you would want to change your plea in this case uh, and that you're not aware of the state wanting to do that. Um, that is the first time any such issue has been raised and I see it as a distraction and as simply a statement made by you as part of the, the litany of things um, that you are not perhaps pleased with. As far as my conduct in this case, I already addressed those issues. I'm not going to revisit uh, issues related to uh, my familiarity with the father of one of the victims that was done very early on. I made a very thorough record and I gave the parties at that point an opportunity to address that after they had ample time to digest that information. While it's true you have a right to seek substitution of judge, it is not unfettered. There was a time limit for that. In fact, it was exercised because judge, a prior judge was assigned to this case and your attorneys on your behalf exercise that right of substitution. So to say that you have the right to seek recusal at any time would be a misstatement of the law. 
And even if you think that should be exercised or there is a valid claim for that, sir, it's not been raised in the proper way before this court. This trial will keep going. I still expect the basic rules of civility and decorum to be followed. That includes, sir, that when there is an objection to a question that you ask, that you wait for the state to indicate their objection and the basis for it. If I need additional information, I will ask for it. If I don't need additional information, I will rule on it. And I do expect that even if you disagree with that ruling, that you will abide by it and that you will move forward. Whether that's asking a new question, rephrasing a question that you've asked, I do ask that you follow that simple rule of decorum, and that's you not interrupt, and then you follow the rules of procedure. As far as the other issues you raise concerning your right to assistance of counsel, the record before this court over the many days that that topic has been raised, even going back to the two afternoons of hearings this court held, um, I will not revisit those. I believe I honored your request to represent yourself as is required by uh, the Constitution of not only the United States of America, but the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin. And that you made a very deliberate choice after being fully advised and aware of all the requirements that I needed to go through under the case law, both case law in the state of Wisconsin and case law from the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, which not only guides this court, but this court must follow. I agree with the state and would um, draw your attention to the two cases that were cited. Uh, United States X Rel George versus Lane, found at 718 F second 226, and Retzloff versus Moran, uh, found at 2022 Westlaw 3045190. I let you put on the record all of those points. Uh, in order to give you that opportunity to make a full record of the issues that you have believed that you are entitled to raise. But those sovereign arguments regarding uh, written findings of fact, bill of particulars, regarding contracts that you enter into, regarding admiralty court, uh, etc., they're baseless, sir. And this court need not address them further. Now with that, I know it's 1130, but I would like to get one more witness on before at least we break for lunch. The jury, of course, has been out for quite some time. So I'll instruct Madam Clerk to bring the jury out. Well, you didn't uh, bring up the Higgins Levine 415 US 533 decision. That was that was not addressed in the, the issues are still not addressed. There's still been no proof to anything that you said, anything that the prosecution has said. It still Our hasn't been- is noted and we will continue. Bring the jury out, please. There still hasn't been uh, Mr. Brooks, any proof. I've addressed them there to the extent that I will. Proof. There still hasn't been any proof. I never once, the comment about me not flinching was when you said that there's 66 years of experience at that table. That's the comment I said that doesn't make me flinch. That was mischaracterized. That should be for the record. There's still Noted. been no there's still been no proof. Mr. About Brooks, please stop. I'm not going to address whether there's verified proof or not of jurisdiction, because whether not, there's anything along those lines. It is frankly not required under the law. You may disagree with that. 
you can take that up on appeal, whether that's an interlocutory appeal or whether that's a direct appeal if there is a conviction, but I'm not going to address it any further. Because there's no verified proof. There does not need to be, sir. All right, I believe the jury is coming out. Is that true? In order for a case to... All right, the record should reflect that the jury is coming out and we are about to continue with the state's next witness. Once was the plaintiff addressed, that wasn't addressed. Where is the plaintiff? Where is the injured party? The jury will disregard the statements presently being made by the defendant. Because y'all don't want the jury to know the truth. The jury will disregard those statements made by the defendant. It is not his opportunity to testify. They are comments and as such are to be disregarded. I see what's going on. All right. Thank you, everyone. You may be seated. Mr. Brooks. So I'm the only one. I got one. Mr. I got Brooks. one ear that work and I heard that. This on, is man. to benefit on, you so that no, you not. understand Ain't none your of this to witness benefit me, so let's has be clear a prior record. Your Honor, when I leave the table, I'm away from the courtroom and I have to elevate my voice. This is the so alleged record of ableless time. Stop talking. One more interruption and you're going to be removed to the next courtroom. That's what you want to do anyway. It's not what I want to do. Do not interrupt Attorney Opper. So can, Your Honor, so I believe he has seven prior criminal convictions via OWI 2nd from 1997 and OWI 3rd from 1997 and OWI 4th from 2003, criminal trespass to dwelling from 2006. Right, I need to take a break. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. He pounded his fist. Frankly, it makes me scared. And we're taking a break. In relation to the alleged incident on November 21st of 2021, would it be fair to say that there's been no contact between you and the alleged defendant? Not since then, no. That, that last answer was kind of low. Did you say no? I said no, not since then. So that, that would mean, <coughs> assuming, that would mean no contact at all via phone or anything like that? No. So my question would be, I don't know if you can see them from here, but do you recognize these pictures? Um, you need to show those to the state. The bail will take them. It's not proper procedure, sir. to how they have relevance. It's also Sustained. Sustained what? Not relevant. If they are relevant, it creates foundation. And I can prove that. I'll take up the issue outside the presence of the jury. Uh, the conclusion of this one is going to be the bring the witness back in. But next question, please. And these need to be offered into evidence as well. Uh, you stated that, that 
there's been no contact. How would the alleged defendant be? How would the alleged defendant obtain photographs from you if there's been no contact? Grounds back. Grounds. Sustained. Some facts not in evidence. Not relevant. How's it not relevant? Photos just don't pop up out of the blue. Mr. Brooks uh, assumes facts not in evidence. And any and at this point of conduct right after facts. the alleged date of violation here is not relevant. Alleged violation. You're the correct. Record. After the date charged, that the dates that are charged for these allegations, you are absolutely correct. Thank you. I can, I can shoot those with my little thing, and then when somebody comes close, I just do it. Have you since That's what I was trying to do the early. evening of November 21st of 2021? That's a way. Have you attempted to contact the listeners? Grounds. Grounds. I'm going to excuse the jury. It's through the ashes of PVX game. That means it won't be for everyone, and that's okay. Testing will further refine our approach for corruption, but as a system, it's core to introducing risk versus reward in ashes while disincentivizing griefing. If you have any questions, feel, shoot, feel, feel free to shoot me a DM or in Discord or on Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's pretty fair. Uh, and again, I think that, again... I'm going to let you make an offer of proof as to why you believe the photographs and the questioning I don't think about so contact like, oh, after oh, the oh, alleged oh, incident oh, is relevant. It's relevant because these were sent by the witness. It assumes a fact, not an evidence. But so what is the letter hold to? On, hold on. Tell me the basis you believe there's been communication and why you believe it's relevant to it's, her testimony. It's relevant because it was testified to her first time testifying, and then also. Uh, by uh, was the last guy, Goof, that he was told that the witness was supposed to be so deeply afraid of me and all this type of stuff. So if you're so deeply afraid and worried about somebody and this and that, why would you speak to have contact? Do you want to open up the door to the other act's evidence? Of That's you? not opening. No, 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 no. That's not Hear opening the door. Hear me out. Oh, yes, it does. No, it doesn't. These witnesses have been incredibly careful to abide by my rulings. Sometimes in a court of law, when there are pretrial rulings, the testimony of a witness needs to be said in such a way not to run afoul of that. This witness, Detective Good, I believe Detective Casey and others, Corey Runkle, and even uh, Nicholas Kirby yesterday, this court has all had to stop them. So that they didn't run afoul, or they've stopped themselves, so that they didn't run afoul of the court's pretrial ruling on other acts of evidence between you and this witness. And I have been very, very careful to make sure that doesn't come in. But if you keep questioning her about whether she's afraid or not, or I why she wouldn't have contact or not, you are opening the door to that testimony. Oh. All of how, my rulings have been does, made to prevent what could be seen as prejudicial in, uh, evidence. The standard's not prejudicial. The standard's whether it's unfairly prejudicial. It's but unfairly you can open the door Your to Honor, that, sir. It's unfairly president, uh, uh, prejudicial that I have a, a, a document stating that November 20th never even happened, but yet and still the witness then can get on the stand and lie on the stand. Over to the state. Come on, man. 
Y'all know that's not right. Y'all know that's not right. Then you need to immediately turn it over to the state right now. It may become relevant, but no one has seen it. When so, did you receive the so document? That, so Hold on. When did you? I'm having you make an offer. For, when did you receive the okay, document? Okay, but that I just want to stay for the record, Your Honor. That that's that's kind of biased because the, the state did the same thing yesterday with creating the uh, ex exhibit right on the fly that didn't even exist that I didn't have. But that's then, not true. That's a misstatement no, that, of the that, of that the is evidence. true. No, she said it herself. No. Marking an exhibit is not creating an no, exhibit. No, not marking an exhibit. She said... We're not going to go down a tangent, sir. Right, I'm going to focus gonna on this, you, and I'm going to give you the fair. opportunity to fair. make a record. It's not right? fair. It's not fair. When did you receive <clears throat> this document that you claim was sent by this witness? It is not claimed. It's for a fact. Sir, it hasn't been established yet. I need to make a record. So y'all want, want, want to see the letter? I want to see the letter. I want to see the letter. Okay, so I gotta, and I want to so know when you received it. I got to bring that in. Every time, this this round get, every time I'm presenting something that needs to be made for the record, it placed in the evidence, it's a problem. But the state can do it, no it's, problem. It's not, sir, there are proper procedures, and okay, I don't want well, you to make the a proper record. Procedure. If, I don't, if you don't make a record, so then what? I can't it, make a ruling. It threw people off the loop. They weren't ready for it. They scared of it. That's what it is? Come on, man. Mr. Brooks. Come on, man. Stop. When you, you Stop are, it. You are Stop even it. Letting You're a public servant, Your Honor. I, I respect your courtroom. I you respect do. you. You're a public servant, though. Your job is to be the referee. Is it or is it not? You state it so yourself on record that your job is being the umpire. Yes, you can be excused. My apologies. My apologies too, but it needs to be some truth. Especially when we're talking about stuff that didn't even happen, but they're allowed to get on the stand and say that it happened when they know it didn't happen. So let me make, I'm going to make a record about what this he's is referring ridiculous, to man. in count 77. Okay. Where, and what happened to that paper? Because it was on the table. Then when Mr. I come Brooks, back, in, I need to make a record happen. of a variety of so things. So who took my paper? And, and you keep interrupting me repeatedly today. I have shown an abundance of patience this morning. I've warned you repeatedly about being removed from the courtroom. And then every time I try to get into it, you, meaning an explanation and make a record, you interrupt, you attempt to divert everyone from what is being done this very second. I didn't attempt to do anything. Yes, you do it repeatedly, sir. So you're doing it once again. Whatever, just make your record. The document that Mr. Brooks wanted to show Detective Guth and this witness was a letter sent from the state of Wisconsin to the court regarding count 77. The state sought to dismiss that count and they have prosecutorial discretion and I granted the request that the charge be dismissed. Why was the charge dismissed? And that's I, I can't answer. I, it was dismissed because the request was made, sir. They don't need a reason. There's a, an abundance of case law about prosecutorial discretion. And they chose not to pursue that. My Your, guess Your Honor, is maybe to simplify respect. things and to keep this tidy. I don't know. You know what? I'll indulge you. Attorney Upper, would you like to provide a basis for why the state sought dismissal of that charge prior to the start of this trial? Yes, Your Honor, because as Ms. Patterson just testified a short while ago, she did not have any visible marks or injuries from that event. And we did have the photographs of her injuries. We did not want to confuse the record as to whether or not there was a battery that occurred on November 20th. Your Honor, I object to that. What does, what does the letter read? You have the letter. You showed it to I, me, I sir. Try. Yeah, and I'm, I've been trying to find it ever since I came back in, and now all of a sudden I can't. And now find you're it. impugning, though, like somehow you're impugning the integrity of this court, no, of I'm the bailiffs of this state. You're accusing, frankly, everyone of moving your finger, papers. Did I point the finger at anyone? Did I say anyone did anything? Not directly, but indirectly you did. So sir. how can you make you the assumption made, that I'm saying? Can that I, I please point make the someone? record without yes, you interrupting? Yes, you may. Yes, you may. I apologize. I appreciate that. Thank you. But you made repeated comments, sir, about the, I can't find my documents, I don't know what happened, things of that nature. When you came back out, 
uh, you took multiple minutes before you even asked your first question of Ms. Patterson. Um, and if I need to, I'll have a bailiff put on the record that no one touched your table. Your Honor, did I say anyone touched my table? No. I didn't, I didn't you implied it, sir. But did I say that? You I mean, I never you stated said, it implicitly. I never asked the bailiffs, hey, did anyone touch my table? I never said that to them. I just said, I can't find my paper, which is the truth. In the I'm way that down. you said it, like, hmm. I didn't point anyone without, out, with, though. And, like, well, that's the kind of spirit. interesting. I don't, I don't have a document that was just on my table. That is what you said. That's what I said, effect. but I did not point the finger at anyone. So, I you can have the letter. In, Your Honor, You've with all been respect, given. I can see if I came in and said, hey, when did you move something off my table? Or if I would have directed that towards the state, or if I would have directed that towards the bunch or something like that, then it would be, that would be more validity than what you're saying. I need to continue with the record, sir. It's very apparent to me, sir, that every time, I can't say every time, because that would be an absolute, but many times throughout this trial, and especially the last two days, when the court makes a ruling that you disagree with, or I want to make a record about some behavior of yours, or a, a further record about a ruling that you uh, that was not in your favor, that you start peppering me with questions or comments, statements. You question me about the law. You ask, is it verified law? It is, from my perspective, a clear attempt to to kind of turn us in a direction away from what we're doing, perhaps even to stall and to delay. I'm sorry That's my first that I'm making a rule and you're doing it again. Maybe because it has no validity. So, I am trying to make a record outside the presence of the jury about a line of questioning you want to ask Ms. Patterson. Now, I've reviewed repeatedly up on the bench 90608 and 90616, which are two of the primary ways you can attack credibility. I've referenced one of those previously. 90608 is evidence of character and conduct of a witness. I'm not going to read through it all, but it's limited to character for truthfulness or untruthfulness. It's not specific instances of conduct. It's character evidence, which frankly wouldn't even come from the witness who's testifying. All right, then there's the statute on bias, 90616. All right, and none of the questions as I heard them went to a permissible topic under bias of witnesses. You generally said credibility. You did not give me any further explanation as to why you believed it was relevant to credibility. Now we have you uh, claiming that there's some document that was sent by the witness after the charges were filed that apparently contained photographs. I think, I, and you can clarify the record momentarily when I'm done. Uh, that you believe goes to the credibility of this witness. So I need to ask a few questions about that, sir, to determine whether it has relevance to those issues. Number one, when did you receive this letter? I received this multiple letters, actually, over a period of time. It, it was, I refer to this one because this one has pictures. And why do you believe one, it was from to Ms. Answer your Patterson? Question, to answer your question with clarity. Thank you. Does it have a date on it? The letter? No, I didn't bring the letter. I brought the pictures. Because I thought from my interpretation, I thought showing the pictures would be okay. How did, it, how did I get this? So my mind was saying, show the pictures. They didn't, they didn't come out of thin air. The witness knows the that they sent me the pictures. They know that. Well, again, it assumes facts that aren't here. You're assuming this witness sent, sent it. I don't know. But even if she did, what relevance does it have to her credibility before this jury? It goes to the credibility because she's put on this facade of being so afraid of someone 
but yet still you know that we're not supposed to have contact but you still sneaking behind and saying oh I wonder how you're doing and she, oh this and this and that oh, I don't think no, she's ever said she was oh, afraid mm-hmm. I think that was the officers who may have uh, stated that but I don't believe she but, ever said that she specifically said today when you asked her why did you it was either why did you go back or why did you have a look at my note and it, she was said, why, I it was why weren't you forthright with all the details that was the question so again I'm going to ask you even if this letter's from her these pictures are from her how does it relate to her credibility before the jury? Who else could be? Who else could these pictures be from? I'm going to ask you point blank. Did you get a letter that's signed from her? I got them. What do you mean signed? No How do you know? Letters. What's your bel- Why do you have a belief that they are from her? I have multiple letters from her. You're not answering my question. Why do you believe the letters are from Erica Patterson? Because they were sent from Erica Patterson. Why else would I? Were they signed by her? We mean signed. Did she write her name on the letter? Was are, it the content of the letter? Me? No, I'm not kidding you. I need to make a record, sir. You're making a statement that these letters are from her and that they're relevant to her credibility. Your Honor, I'm going to go out on the on the limb and, here. And I'm asking you why you have hold that opinion. I'm, I'm going to go out on the limb here and assume, which I know is true, you've never been in my position. You've never been in jail. So you've never received a letter from someone writing someone in jail. No one is gonna suck. When you say to me, when you say to me, what's the the basis why you believe they're from Miss Patterson? Is there some information in them that you that only she would know? Did she sign the letters? Is it is it penmanship that you recognize? Why do you believe they're from her as opposed to somebody else sending you information? Could be your mom, could be, I'm just saying, could be anybody somebody... else. You gotta answer my question, it's called your an Honor, offer of this, proof. But you still gotta understand why this, this, is, this is mind-boggling to me. Like how, I got a child with this woman. How would I, why would I not know her handwriting? But you have to why would a I foundation not know? for these letters, sir. That might be this through your ridiculous. own testimony. So that I'm trying to, figure out why you believe they're from her. Not all this other stuff about Are you I'm in serious? jail and I have a child. I'm trying to act, I, I need to know. It's called an offer of proof. Are you serious? What do you believe? Why do you believe they're from her? I am serious. I need because they're from, from her. her. But you're assuming Like how, how else am I supposed to answer that? I've given you a few reasons why it would lend to that. Opinion. So it has to be it has to be put in a legal the term. The bottom line or is I need the letter. So if you're gonna question her on that, the state absolutely has a right to see the letter. So you you need to provide that letter. I'm not the bottom line is I'm not gonna allow any questioning without having that letter. I don't have it. The state has the ability to question you about that, to question this witness, and to look at the veracity of what your claims are here. So when we, I may take an early lunch, if that's in your cell, then you can go get it and bring it. But without that letter, I'm not allowing this line of questioning. Do you have the letter with so, you in court? I just said no. Okay. How many times I gotta say the same thing on, on, on record? You know, sometimes, sir, I don't hear what you say because you interrupt me so much or you answer quietly. And, and I'm taking notes and I'm focused on probably a dozen things at the same time. But if I, but if I say something under my breath, everybody seems to hear it. Everybody seems to hear In that just fine. In a quiet courtroom, everybody yes, assumes, we can hear it very clearly. And everybody assumes that it has to be disparaging. Or, Once again, you're doing this tactic. Because try to it, it's not a tactic, it's facts. It's facts. It's facts. To some other reason. It's facts. Because I, I find thing. it hard to believe that um, I'm gonna all let of a sudden state... nobody hears what I say. I'm gonna let the state make a record of why they believe it's objectionable because I haven't let them do that. I've given you multiple opportunities to tell me why you so believe I, it's- I didn't get these pictures from, they, nobody else. Why was somebody else- The record will else, reflect you have two pictures that you believe were from this witness. That I know is from. No, that you believe. That I know. All right, I'll ask the state their position on all of this. My position, Your Honor, is that these pictures, first of all, should not be admissible. One, because of the discovery violation, we've never seen them before. Two, because we have reason to believe that they were not sent from Erica Patterson. 
was on a jail phone call talking to his mother, Don Woods, uh, about Don Woods sending these photographs to him. Now, that's a lie. I object Let to that. the state make their argument without interruption, sir. That's a lie, though. Three, I believe that these photographs are designed to make a suggestion to the jury that Erica Patterson is a bad mom. I think that that's what the defendant is trying to do. And if we're going to go down that road, then we would be forced to counter that claim. First of all, it doesn't make her an incredible witness, if it's even true. And second of all, if we go down that road, we would be forced to counter that claim by pointing out that not only does the defendant not live with the child in question, he doesn't live with any of the other children that he has, he impregnated Erica Patterson when she was a minor in Nevada, and for doing so, he was convicted of statutory sexual seduction, pled guilty in March of 2007 to that felony offense, and is a sex offender on the registry as a result. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. And that's the object to that, I'm not because sure. that's a lie. Let him finish. At the end of the day, let him we, finish. We're going to open the Mr. door on that. No, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be ac accurate all on the record since you think you know so much. Once so again, we can Mr. open Brooks the door on. We can open the door on how old she told me she was. Interrupting. We, we can ask he's, that question. He is too, over the top animated right now. Do you know that? that? Mr. Brooks, I'm ordering you to sit down and to let the state no, finish. No, no, I'm not going to sit here and let somebody be inaccurate on the record and lie on the record. Right. Under Illinois versus Allen, I've warned him repeatedly. He's being removed from the courtroom. Um, and you know what? Let me dial that back. We're just going to take an early lunch. One hour. We'll be back. And uh, unless he brings that letter Don't and he can show it is inadmissible, you know, he will not be questioned. <laughs> and under 90611, I will declare the cross-examination closed. You where, you what Thank you. We're in recess. One hour. Breath. Get your facts straight. So let's let's open the door on all of it again so we can get all of it on the record. Since you think you know so much. Did, did you know she said she was 18 when I met her? How are some of these answers allowed to to pass when they're coming straight from reports made by people on the stand? Very curious. I don't understand your question. Are you? I'm not sure what you're asking. I'm asking. What I'm asking you is. Reading from the report that the people on the stand are giving, the report that they gave to uh, to law enforcement. If you're asking me whether there's a mechanism in the rules of evidence and how to establish that before the jury, the answer to that is yes. If you're asking me how you do that, I'm not going to answer that. All right, I didn't ask how. I just, I just. To be blunt, which I've been since the beginning of this trial, obviously. I see the whole strategy here by the prosecution. I, I see right through. Don't have any cross-examination. Mainly because you, you've already schooled, schooled the people getting on the stand on how to answer certain things. Well, that is completely speculative on your part without it's any obvious. basis in law or fact. It's obvious. Sir, you could ask questions that establish that. You can ask them if they've met with anyone. You haven't done that. So for you to say that right now is without basis. If you it's, want to... It's clear. If you are looking to elicit what they said in the report, there is a way under the rules of evidence based upon the way the witnesses have answered to clarify that, but that requires you to call certain witnesses. I'm not going to give you any more legal to, advice further to, than that. I don't think I have to so, call any other witnesses. That's if you're asking me to strike their testimony based on I your perceived, say anything then that's, about that. All right, then I'm going to bring the jury back out. And you're going to call your next witness. So I'm so not hearing you, a request from you at this time. You said you wanted to raise a legal issue. What's the legal issue? The legal issue is what. How, how is the state allowed to 
coach. The You're assuming they spoke to them and coached them. It's obvious. I'm not. I'm not stupid. Well, I disagree with that, sir. Again, you could ask questions all of a sudden, to lay a foundation all of a sudden, the state with these don't witnesses. Got, all of a sudden, for the first time in trial, all of a sudden, now they don't got no cross. That's clearly a rush to try to get through the case. Hurry up. We just gonna not, we just gonna let these people go. Well, this is not, argument. Come on, man. That's, this is argument on your part, sir. It is pure commentary at this point. I just want, I just want that on point. the record. I see through it. And your nice see try, through, but I see through has absolutely no basis in the fact. Yeah, I know that's what's being done. You Come could on, ask man. these I'm, questions. You could ask man. these witnesses the right certain questions, not, and you're far, not far from an idiot. They're your witnesses, sir. If you believe, so every so I'm going to start asking every witness up here that they seem just to mysteriously now not have any cross for. Have they been coached to answer the way they answer? Because well, you can't find, ask that, but I you can ask them if funny. they've met with anyone ahead of their testimony here funny. today, which you've done funny. with other witnesses. I find it very funny that these are their reports, and now all of a sudden you can... Oh, I saw the person in the car. Oh, but uh, Brooks, I saw them reach for something. Oh, I don't, delay these I don't recall what they had on. Mr. Brooks, you there's no purpose for you saying for this right don't now. I don't know what they had on. I find that All right, very... I'm having the jury brought on, out. I'm instructing you to on, avoid man. the commentary when the jury comes uh, out. You I, will forfeit your right to be I didn't present. Say nothing. You, you, you. Pick up potential as to a uh, witness by the name of Abel Lescano. He has prior criminal history. Thank you. So as long as the jury's out, we should probably discuss that. So I would like to provide the defendant and the court with. So that had to be that had to be said. So the defendant. That's not how it was said. Uh, that that was how it was said. You want to run the record back? Mr. Brooks. So I'm the only one. I got one. Mr. I got Brooks. one ear that work, and I heard that. This on, is man. to benefit on, you, so it, that no, you not. understand Ain't none your of this to witness benefit me, so let's has be clear a prior record. Your Honor, when I leave the table, I'm away from the courtroom, and I have to elevate my voice. This is the so alleged record of Abel Lescano. Stop talking. Oh man, like I don't know who y'all be thinking y'all fooling. I set the value and turn for value. This uh, document. One more interruption, and you're going to be removed to the next courtroom. That's what you want to do anyway. It's not what I want to do. Do not interrupt, Attorney Opper. So can Your Honor, so, I believe he has seven prior criminal convictions. The OWI 2nd from 1997, an OWI 3rd from 1997, an OWI 4th from 2003, criminal trespass to dwelling from 2006. All right, I need to take a break. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. He pounded his fist. Frankly, it makes me scared. And we're taking a break. I will advise you that if you are in that courtroom, uh, because I have put you there and you have not reclaimed uh, the right to be present by number one, asking and then um, expressing a willingness to conduct yourself consistently with the quorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial proceedings, you will remain over there. And it looks like he took his headphones off, so I will... Mr. Brooks, I'm advising you that if you fail to call a witness, you will forfeit your right to pr present any additional witnesses. And I'm doing this outside the presence of the jury right now for a reason. I need to know from you right now, you are unmuted. Who is your next witness? What you trying to say? That was very disrespectful, sir. You chose to take off your headphones. You yeah, choose to I'm read. I'm muted. I'm muted. So why why am I gonna have my headphones on and I'm muted? Well, I would think your headphones help you hear. The they muting do. is so that I don't have to hear the disruptions. Okay, well then why should I need to hear? What so you let say? me be clear, sir. And you, you are not. Be clear or nothing. I don't gotta listen to you. I will ask you one last time, sir. Who is your next witness? First of all, is she talking to me again? He, so this. We gotta, keep doing, we gotta keep doing this little childish stuff, dude. I gotta sit up here and I'm supposed to abide by every single rule, but don't nobody else gotta do that. The record should Judicial reflect. Misconduct. 
that Mr. Well, Brooks is spouting off, making unsubstantiated yeah. the can allegations against me. this court, directly attacking the integrity of this court and these proceedings, while yet this refusing no to answer simple no, no questions. Integrity. Mr. Brooks, you That's are- That's not my name. I told you I don't consent to being called that name. Sir, you are hereby advised this is the last time I will ask this question don't, don't talk or you will like forfeit your right to present you any show me what, additional show me what, show me, witnesses show me where that's law. because show you are where not cooperating law. with this process. Show me that it's law. That's all I'm asking. Show me that it's lawful law. Mr. Brooks. How can, how can I forfeit not being able to have a defense? Are you kidding me? All I'm asking is that you conduct yourself with dignity, with decorum, and with respect. I will okay. gladly bring you back into this courtroom so you can present your additional witnesses. You're but right. you need to ask me to come back into this courtroom. With all due respect. I'm tired of having this back and forth with you every day. It's not my intention to it's come in here and, and have this in. Have this, these interactions with you every day. It's not. Regardless to what you may think, regardless to how you may feel, that is not my intention. That is not my intention. Okay? I simply do what I do because I do not have the understanding. So if I don't understand something, I'm going to ask a question. I apologize if it makes you feel that I'm intentionally trying to delay the uh, proceeding. If I'm intentionally trying to be disruptive. Because that's not the case. Because that's not the and case. It, and I feel very, and I feel very, 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 very disrespected very, very every time the record is made. Time the record is made. Making it seem like that's what I'm like attempting to do. Attempting to do. So of course it's gonna so make it's gonna frustrate. Of course it's gonna, make, it's gonna, frustrate. Frustrate. It's gonna make me a little bit upset. Gonna make me a little bit upset. And I just want you to understand and I that. I just want you to understand that. It seems to me the it way I'm interpreting, way I'm interpreting what you're doing, which is it doing, is your courtroom. Is, it is your that's courtroom. not it. not that's a dispute. Not a, that's, that's, not dispute. that's not up for debate. That's not up for debate. You control what's going on you in there. That's what's not going a dispute. On in there. That's not a dispute. But the way I'm interpreting, the way I'm interpreting what you're doing is that I'm being held in contempt. That's how, in contempt. that's how I'm interpreting. That's how I'm interpreting. Because one of the three things that's cited. That's in the Illinois versus Allen, Illinois one, of them is, Allen. one of them one is being gagged. I haven't been gagged. I haven't been gagged. One of them is held in contempt. One of them is held in contempt. If What's I'm, the third, Mr. Under, Brooks? What's under, the third? The third is removed from the courtroom while the trial, the trial continues, continues, right? Trial continues, that's the third, right? right? And is that's, that's third, what's right? been done. Okay. So now, okay. so now, where does it say after where that? Where does it say after that that? That having me on, uh, having uh, me uh, on a headset uh, 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 a or headset being able to see and hear and all this and this, how is that not prejudicial my prejudice. defense? Sir, you can I raise that even, issue on appeal. Even, you can raise that, that issue on appeal this is if you are convicted. This is why I say that. This is why, this is why I say that, though. Because I can't even see. The only thing I can see right now when I'm looking at the TV is you and the prosecution table. I can't see anything else. I can't see anything else. I understand that, sir. I'm fully aware of that. So I'm not I'm not fully so aware not, of what's I'm going not on fully in the courtroom. Aware of what's going on in the courtroom. Don't don't I deserve that right don't, to don't be I able to see that and right hear everything that's going on? Hear everything that's going on? If you can conduct yourself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concepts of courts and judicial proceedings, the answer then is yes. So, so I'm not gonna have a debate with you about the law. I will ask you again, would you like to come back into this courtroom? Are you going to kick me out? Are you going to kick me out? Sir, I'm asking the questions right now. Would you like to come back into this courtroom? Yes or no? Are you going to kick me out? Sir, it's a yes or no question. Would you like to come back into this courtroom? Well, my answer, my answer was based on the reason why I'm answering why like that answering is because like the moment that. I say something, say it's going to get me put out. Me I don't want to keep hauling this stuff back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. 
It makes it, it makes essentially it, makes, it, it, makes it essentially, wastes time, really. It wastes time, really. I'm well aware of that, sir. That it delays the proceedings. Yeah, but <laughs> but then it's but then it's laid at my feet as if that's my attempt. You think I want to be over here? You think I want to be over here, sir? I don't know what you want or don't want at this time. I know that we need to complete this trial, and that you have frustrated uh, today more than ever before the ability of this court to do that. Well, I apologize for you feeling that way, but I'm frustrated too. But I'm frustrated and nobody, too. No, nobody, nobody seems nobody, to take no, that into account. I'm just as frustrated as everybody. Probably more. Probably then I suggest more. that you conform your conduct to the requirements there of courtesy no and decorum so that you don't run the risk of forfeiting your right to be present. But that falls on you and you alone, sir. There is no conduct that's, no I, I don't, I don't understand what you mean by that. I really don't. Mr. Brooks, really don't. you may not understand it. I don't think that's accurate. I think you know exactly what you're doing. If that's what you think, that's fine. And I argue with you have demonstrated sure. throughout this case that you pay attention to witnesses' testimony, that you make cogent and coherent objections. Uh, at times that you have even had evidence suppressed in this case or stricken. That's the word I used during this case. You made an opening statement. You communicate with witnesses. So Honor, you clearly read, write, and understand not English. Fair. That's not an issue not, here, sir. It's it's not fair Are you self-represented? Absolutely. Does that present difficulties and disadvantages? Absolutely. But that takes me back to when you waived your right to counsel, and you did so knowingly, freely, voluntarily, and with a full understanding of the disadvantages and advantages of doing so, uh, meaning advantages of having an attorney, the disadvantages of doing it on your own, and you made a deliberate decision to yeah, represent yourself, yeah, and that fair. comes at a risk to you of yes at times not fully understanding the law the rules of evidence the rules of procedure but you that's do so fair. at your peril that's not fair, that's not fair to state your honor because so i'm going to do the change. following the since i'm not really change. getting anywhere i'm going to mute Thank you for the moment i'm not getting anywhere with him um i would like him to be brought over um and he has a choice to make he can come back over or he doesn't. Either way, he's going to be asked to call a witness in front of the jury. I will ask him three times if he fails to give me a direct answer, and after the third time, I will make the appropriate finding, but I will do that outside the presence of the jury. But we are going to continue. So we'll go off the record, and he will come back over here. Thank you. We are in recess until that happens. To say something and then get kicked out. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what to tell her then. I don't, I don't no, no. Because I'm going to end up having to come back over here again. Don't y'all get tired of hauling all this stuff over here, over there, over here, over there, over here?